Welcome to another episode of the Moving Markets Podcast. My name is Jeffrey Dunyon. I am the owner and founder of Safe Option Strategies. It is Friday, uh, March the 8th, 2024. U.S. stock market has just closed. We're going to record today's episode right after the close of the market, uh, get you caught up on what happened. We didn't do a podcast yesterday. Uh, my apologies for not letting you know that in advance. Um, I didn't have a lot of advance on it. It had to be kind of canceled last minute, but we're going to catch you up on yesterday and today, what happened, why it happened. Uh, more importantly, a look at next week and what to expect as we as we go into the next calendar week. Some of the economic reports that are going to come out, um, how we're going to prepare ourselves and, and play it. Make sure before the podcast is over, before you sign off, that you go on to sostrades.com. Check out everything that we have to offer there. Uh, we are we're, we're we're trashing the stock market average right now, folks. If you if you were to follow the trades that we are sending out to all of the members, the paid members of our program. We're up 32% on the calendar year as of right now today. So uh, you got to be a part of these trades. You got to be a part of what we're doing and, and uh, make some of the kind of returns that we are get or that, that we are making in our portfolio. Uh, the, the, to put it in perspective, the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average is up less than 3%. Still not bad for only two months out of the calendar year. Uh, the S&P and the NASDAQ, respectively, each up over a little bit over 8%. That's phenomenal for only two months, but we're up 32%. You need to check us out at sostrades.com. And most of all, enjoy today's podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Moving Markets Podcast. It is Friday, March the 8th, 2024. It's about 20 minutes after the close of the U.S. stock market today. Uh, I think we should probably uh, jump right in. I'm not going to do anything in this particular podcast to update the safe option strategies trades. Uh, members, uh, paid members of the safe option strategies program know where we're at right now. We'll go into a lot more detail on that on uh, Monday's podcast for today. Uh, what I want to do, first of all, just by way of a little bit of explanation, what I want to do is tell you why we didn't have a podcast yesterday. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but a little bit of explanation. I had a family situation come up, kind of took me offline, so to speak, right around the time the markets closed. Had to do a couple of other things in the way of sending out some adjustments to our Safe Option Strategies members. And then some of the family stuff that I was involved in just kind of uh, grew in nature a little bit, for lack of a better way to describe it. I never made it back in front of my computer later in the day. So uh, that's why we had no podcast yesterday. So let's talk a little bit about not only what happened today in the market, but what happened uh, yesterday as well. Um, for starters, today, uh, you had a pretty good, I'm going to kind of go in reverse order. We had a we had a sell off today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average stayed somewhat positive for a good portion of the day. The S&P and the NASDAQ started out positive on the employment data. But I, I think as time went on a little bit, the employment data sort of began to sink in and people kind of started changing their minds about what exactly it meant. Well, let me let me explain it in this way. Uh, when the when the employment data came out, what what the markets were looking for was uh, a, a maybe a little bit of a weakening job market, maybe something that that they could look at and say, OK, inflation is going to continue to come down because there are not as many jobs or not as many people getting jobs, therefore not as much money that is going to go into the economy and, and you know, more supply, less demand is the opposite of inflation. Too much demand and too little supply, you know, too many dollars chasing too few products is when you've got inflation going up. So you get these numbers break this morning at, at 830 Eastern time. The consistent estimate was 190,000 jobs. The number came in at 275. So that painted sort of an opposite picture of what people were looking for. But along with that, you had unemployment that was supposed to remain steady at 3.7% tick up to 3.9%. That's not an insignificant move. That's a pretty decent sized move to the upside. And that sort of balanced this high number uh, and then the other thing that kind of balanced this high number is the um, the revision down of the prior number. And not only that, but it, which which means January's number got revised down, because remember, this is February's number that we're looking at in the early part of March. January's number got revised down pretty strong. And there was also a revision made down to December's numbers. 
Now, something that I heard um, that I found incredibly interesting this morning when these numbers were being talked about on one of the financial programs is that you now have something like uh, 10 of the last 12 months, the number that came out for the employment number, the actual number that was reported when we get this report at the beginning of each month, or at least you know about a week into each month, 10 of the last 12 months, it has been revised to the downside. It has not ever been revised to the upside during the current presidential administration. And this morning, the, I was listening to Maria Bartiromo's show on Fox Business News this morning, and um, I, I don't remember who, which, which of the guests that were on this morning were pointing that out. Um, but the guest that was pointing it out was was a little, in my opinion, Steve Moore. I think he he was a little bit too kind to say what I believe. What what he said was. Um, He's not accusing anyone of shenanigans or, or playing with these numbers in a way. He's just talking about maybe a broken system of reporting them. I'm not going to be that kind. I think you've got um, largely Democrat liberal bureaucrats in these roles that, that, that come up with and produce these numbers. And I, I do think they are dishonest partisan hacks. I think they are willing to distort things, to twist things, to, to literally fake things in an effort to make the current administration look better, but then they realize there's enough other people looking at the numbers that they that they have to come back every month and give you uh, a different number. So I, I think they want this notion that President Biden is, you know, creating all these jobs and helping the job market so much. I, I think they they want to perpetrate that BS, which is what it is, is, is near complete BS. And, and try and give him credit for something that he has not really done. And, and I think it's getting more and more to the point where you simply cannot believe these numbers. You, you, when these numbers come out, you just cannot believe them. The same, or, or at least the, the similar census that is done by private individuals comes up with job losses uh, when when the essentially same survey done by the government office comes up with major job gains. And, and I'm sorry, but both cannot be correct and both cannot be accurate. So I'm, I'm getting to the point now, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that these numbers, when they're reported, are not going to continue to affect the stock market, but they're going to continue to be suspect and become more and more suspect as time goes on. They're, they're just, they're no longer believable. Um, it, so it, it's kind of sad. And I think as the, as the day went on, people looked less and less at this number and started looking at this number. And, and even, even the number that was revised down still showed a little bit, a little bit hotter job market than what would make the Fed happy and cause the Fed to be likely to cut rates. When this initial news broke and everyone kind of focused in on the unemployment number versus the uh, the job growth number, uh, you know that caused the markets to go up a little bit. That caused people to get excited a little bit. But then when the reality, even if it's a, a BS number, and I think it is, but when the reality of this still being a lot higher, because even if you revised it down, it still came in a lot higher than what was expected. And that shows a job market that may still be robust enough to not get the Fed thinking different about what they're going to do uh, with rate cuts. Couple that with next week's CPI and PPI reports, and both of them come with them an expectation that things are going to move up a little bit from the previous month and up a little, let me circle both of those. They're expected to go up a little bit from the previous month and up year over year on that core number. And that's a big deal. People are concerned about that. If, if inflation starts rearing its head a little bit again, then rate cuts are off the table. And, and I think a few investors, a few hedge fund managers, brokers, I think they started to kind of think more about that. I'm not going to, I was going to say they kind of started to clue in, but that's, I mean, that's a little bit mean that that suggests that they're not intelligent people. And I think they are like anybody else. They make mistakes and do dumb things at times, but I'm not going to say they're unintelligent people, but I think they started thinking more about 
what is really going on in the economy. And then add one last thing into the mix, and that is the State of the Union speech last night, where two things happened that I, I think both of these things worried Wall Street a little bit today and created a little bit of a sell-off in the NASDAQ and eventually it, in, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average as well. Number one, Joe Biden made it through the speech and there were a lot of people who didn't think he would be able to do that. I myself am surprised that he made it through that speech without going into one of his semi-coma-like moments and, and getting stuck and wondering where he is. And, and look, kudos to him and congratulations to, to the Democrats that want to reelect him. He made it through a speech. The bar was set incredibly low. But I'm telling you right now, whatever your politics are, whether you love him or hate him, whether you love Donald Trump or hate Donald Trump, the thought of four more years of Joe Biden scares the U.S. stock market. Historically, we have a strong, robust market in, in uh, presidential election years. And so far this year, we're off to a good start. And a lot of people are saying, hey, if you just follow the precedent set by history, we're probably going to have a good stock market year this year overall. I'm not going to disagree with that. Historically, no matter who the candidates are, you tend to have a strong stock market in a presidential election year. But I will tell you right now, the notion of four more years of Joe Biden scares the U.S. stock markets. It scares the average trader and investor. We have had a strong market in spite of a weak economy for the last couple of years, at least at least last year, the year before, not so much, but last year, a very strong, robust market in spite of some weakness in the economy. Folks, that's a one off. Those things do not happen consistently when you have horrible, horrible economic policy. And, and again, I don't care what your politics are. You can hate me for, for taking this conservative side. Um, you can be on the same page as me. I, I don't really care. You cannot point to one single thing Joe Biden and his administrative his administration have done from an economic policy standpoint that has been beneficial to this country. And, and if you try and to come up with something, you're going to be grasping at straws and you're going to be following party lines and making stuff up and spinning things because the man for our economy has been a cataclysmic disaster. Um, and, and the markets do not like the idea of him being in office for more years. There are a lot of people who don't like the idea of Trump being in office for four more years. There are a lot of people who don't like him, but anyone who is willing to be semi-objective will tell you that his economic policies for this country were better than what Joe Biden has given us these last two and a half years. So that's, I, I think, a combination of the fact that he simply made it through that speech and suddenly there's a little bit of a hope that maybe this guy can make it through a successful election period. And then and then the other thing that happened last night, that this is kind of the, the trifecta uh, of what caused the markets to be down today, is the things he actually spoke about in that State of the Union address last night. He wants to raise taxes. He wants to give away more of everyone's money. What, every time he talks about forgiving student loan debt, the government of the United States has no ability to forgive that debt. They can only transfer that debt from one set of people to another set of people. And every one of us that has either paid off our student loans or never had student loans is going to burden that responsibility for, for those individuals who have borrowed for worthless degrees lack the ability to pay it back right now and and oh good old uncle joe is going to spend my money bailing you out of your bad situation and i'm look I, i'm fired up right now that pisses me off more than i i don't even have words if i want to still be a gentleman and keep this a clean show i don't have words to say how much that upsets me and, and it's so blatant and it's so transparent it's the only transparent thing he has done it, while in office, it is just make it obvious that he is buying the votes or trying to buy the votes of people who have got themselves into too much college loan debt with a worthless piece of crap, humanities or liberal arts degree, and no ability to pay it back. Now, before I get myself in too much trouble, there are plenty of people that have humanities and liberal arts degrees that then go on to pay off their student loans and be responsible and get good jobs 
but there are far too many of them who don't. So let me clarify that before I before I paint with too broad a brush and, and tick off everybody. Um, that's why I, I believe it was those those three things. I believe it was the actual numbers that came in on this job report, and it took a little while in the day for those numbers to sink in. I think it was that's number one. Number two in the trifecta is this concern over numbers that are expected to be higher with the CPI, the core CPI data next month. And I think these numbers, if they're reported truthfully, I think they could be off a little bit farther. And then it's the double whammy of Joe Biden simply making it through a speech uh, along with the things that he said in the speech. All three of those things combined in a way that gave these markets very, very little hope of, of trading to the upside today. And I think it's the first week, um, I think I heard just recently, in fact, it may have been the headline here, the first week since October, Dow, oh, the worst week, not, not the first week since October that the markets were down, but the worst week since October for the Dow Jones Industrial Act. Now, I'm not gonna end on a note of doom and gloom. I don't wanna do that to anybody. I've, I've really got on one today because I, I think, I think the markets kind of got what they deserved today and, and probably should have sold off. And, and I, I still would not be bothered by a correction in the S&P, maybe down to around 4,800. I, I think that would be a healthy thing for the S&P to have a correction like that, for the Dow and the NASDAQ to have similar corrections. I don't want it on the backs of, of news that, that is more doom and gloom. I'd like to see it be more of a natural market correction, but I will tell you this, I don't think this market is done going up. Now, I know that actually, believe it or not, that contradicts a little bit of what I've said in the very recent past. I, I have said multiple times, I, I think this rally is too big. I think it's too long. I would like to see a healthy correction that is simply a matter of people taking a collective breath, relaxing a little bit, letting the market correct a little bit, and then looking for some amazing buy opportunities before getting back in. But I don't see that happening immediately because I think there are too many people in the media and too many talking heads that, that have figured out a way to spin things. And this happens on both sides of the aisle. I'm not, I'm not getting all Republican versus Democrat in this comment. I believe there are too many people that want to spin things pause enough to keep, positive enough to keep driving the markets up. Even people who will be brutally honest about what the economy is doing are still the same people who are benefiting greatly from what the markets are doing. And they don't want to see that gravy train in. Look, I will admit freely that I am positioned to be very protected in a downward trend in the market, but I make more money when the markets go up. That's the way my portfolio is positioned. Um, I need to add a fourth thing. I kept talking about a trifecta. I need to add a fourth thing that I think did contribute to today's move down, and that is Costco. Costco had a disappointing revenue number. Uh, some of their other numbers were good, but their revenue number was bad. And this is a big company. This is a company that everybody knows, that everybody, I think everybody uses. And, and they took a hard, hard hit today. Now, granted, they've gone from 540 to 790 in just a three and a half month period of time. Maybe it was needed for them to come back to earth a little bit. I don't expect Costco to stay down for very long. I think maybe they hover somewhere in the 720 to seven, maybe 700 range for a, a few trading days to a week. And then I think you're gonna see Costco hit a level of support and start to go back up. But I'm, I just need to add that, that I think that was also a contributing factor to what happened today. All right, yesterday, I told you I'd tell you, you know, give you a recap on both days. Yesterday really was just, I believe, anticipation for the numbers that were coming. The, uh, the private payroll jobs numbers were not too bad. They gave, a little pe they gave people a little bit of hope that the Fed was gonna cut rates sooner than later. I, I think that carried into Thursday's trading, even though that number was released on Wednesday, I think it carried into Thursday's trading. That's why we had small gains on the three major indexes yesterday. Uh, but today, I think it all sort of kind of came crashing back down to reality. And that's why you ended up with the, the sell-off today. So I know that's not much commentary on what happened yesterday, but let's be honest, yesterday is gone and passed. All right, um, big week coming up next week. Uh, core PPI, core CPI, the, the, the picture on where we're at with inflation, those are gonna be huge next week. 
Um, I expect probably on Monday a little bit more sell-off in this market. I don't think the little bit of give back today is done. I expect a little bit more sell-off. And then I think when those uh, CPI numbers come out on Wednesday, I think we're going to get something really similar to what we got at the beginning of this month when we got CPI data that was not as good as what people were hopeful for. Uh, and I, I think it's going to shake this market a little bit more. But like I said, a 10% correction in the in the three major market indexes, don't see that as a bad thing. Take advantage of it with some protected positions, with some non-directional positions, and then be ready to pounce when you get a bounce off of that 10% uh, correction, if it happens the way I think it will. Be ready to pounce when it happens and, and watch this market have another, maybe not like we've seen from November to now, but another bullish run. Uh, that, that we can kind of hang our hats on for a period of time and, and make some good money off of. All right. I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. We will see you back here on Monday's podcast. Thanks. Bye-bye.